Hi, what if the way you are using photos on your slides is destroying your presentations? What if it only takes a couple of seconds to rectify the mistakes once you are aware of them so you can keep your audience's attention throughout your presentation? That is what I'll share with you today. No, I won't talk about beginner mistakes like you should not stretch your image by dragging from the sides and that you need to stretch by holding the shift button and by clicking and dragging from the corner. If you've been watching our channel, you already know this. I'll also not talk about another beginner mistake which is aligning the pictures by just eyeballing. If you have been watching our channel, you already know that you need to select all the pictures and then use tools like align and distribute. So instead of focusing on the technical issues, I'll focus on some strategic issues like fridge magnet syndrome or following wrong advice from presentation gurus etc which are surprisingly common among beginner presenters. So watch this video till the end and let us start. But before that, I am Ram Gopal from PresentationProcess.com. The first mistake most beginner presenters make is to grab the image directly from Google Images. When you do that, you get low resolution images like this and when you click and drag from the corner, you can see that the image doesn't really have enough resolution and your slides look unprofessional. And not only this, you'll also get into a legal soup if you were to use such images in a corporate presentation. The owner of the copyright can sue your company for not seeking permission before using the images and that will definitely affect the reputation of your company. So what is the solution Ram Gopal? Simple, ask for permission. What? Yeah, just go to the contact form of the website and write a short note seeking permission to use the picture. Explain clearly how you are intending to use the picture. As long as you are not making money by using the picture, Nobody refuses permission to use the pictures. Now just watch how by clicking on the same image and by going into the website, I would be able to get a much better image in terms of quality. I can copy the image and if I go back to PowerPoint and paste the image, you can see that the quality of this image is way better than the image that we just picked up directly from Google Images. And when you have a return permission for such high quality images, you are absolutely safe. But what if I don't have the time to seek permission, Ram Gopal? Valid point. Let me give you an alternative solution. When searching for images to use from Google Images, don't just copy the images that you see right here. Instead, go one step further and click on this option here called Tools and that opens up this new set of options. And here you have the option to choose images which have Creative Commons license which means you would be able to use those images without a copyright issue as long as you're able to provide attribution to the author. Not only this, you also have a lot of other advantages in using these tools. For example, if you want to avoid smaller sized images because they pixelate when you enlarge them, you can click on the size option and you can choose just the large images so you will be able to use much sharper images on your slides. Now, when you combine that with Creative Commons license, you would be able to use these images without much of a worry. And not just that, if you want all the photos on your slides to look harmonious, you can search for images based on their color. For example, if I want to just have green colored or green theme based images, you can see that all these images have green theme. And when you use these images, your slides will look far more professional. Not only that, if you have a certain preference for the type of images to be used on your slides, then you can choose them from here. For example, instead of using these photos, you can click on say line drawing type of images and you can see that Google does all the hard work and brings you just the line drawing kind of images. So your slides would look harmonious. Now the best part is you can do this kind of search from Google and also from Microsoft Edge. In fact, I prefer Microsoft Edge for image search because you get far more options. For example, if I click on the filter option, I get even more ways I can filter my images. And as far as licensing is concerned, the labeling is far clearer in Microsoft Edge. For example, if I want to use just the public domain images, I can click on this link and all the images that I see here can be used without any concern for copyright issues. And not just that, I have some more interesting options like if I want to have people as part of my image search, I can use this option. If I want to use just faces, or if I want to use head and shoulders as well, I can choose this image. And the best part is, these are filtered based on public domain and head and shoulders. Isn't that beautiful? 
And not just that, I can even filter based on the layouts. For example, if I want to choose only square type of images I can use, if I want to use tall images I can search for it. There are far more ways to choose my images from Microsoft Edge. So with these many options available for you to pick the right kind of images, there is no excuse for you to just copy images directly from here and paste it on your slides. But what if I don't want to do that? You can search for photos from sites like pixabay.com, pexels.com, unsplash.com, pxhere.com or even publicdomainpictures.net. All the images that you find from these sites are in public domain and when you use these images, you will never get into any copyright hassles. I will leave a link to all these sites in the description box below the video for your convenience. But what if I don't like the images in the public domain? While using images from sites like pixabay.com doesn't require you to provide attribution to the author, if you are willing to provide the attribution, you will have even more options by choosing images from flickr.com. Flickr.com allows you to search for images that have Creative Commons license. That opens up even more options. In my personal experience, the photos that I get from Flickr.com are far more realistic than the photos that I get from many of the stock photo sites. But what if I don't want to do that? Okay, if you have Microsoft 365 subscription, you have an option to use images right inside PowerPoint. All you need to do is to go to Insert Pictures and search for stock images that come as part of PowerPoint and they have a nice collection and beautifully categorized based on keywords and you can even search for specific images by using the search bar. So this provides you even more options to use good quality pictures on your slides. But what if I... Hey, just stop. The second beginner mistake is to have the fridge magnet syndrome. What's a fridge magnet syndrome? Let me explain. <laughs> the thing is, some presenters are allergic to seeing white spaces on their slides. They get an unstoppable urge to fill these spaces with some random images and they end up creating slides that look like this. You don't need an expert to tell you that this looks messy and unprofessional. How do I solve the issue, Ram? Get comfortable with white spaces on your slides. These white spaces give visual relief for your audience. If you are concerned about the negative spaces that you have on your slide, then you can break down your bullet points into individual text boxes and can organize those boxes the way you want. A shortcut to that is you select all the bullet points, right click and go to convert to smart art option and that opens up even more options. Can you see here, this is a much better organized bullet point list than the one that you saw. You have other options like this where you can even add an image or an icon or if you want a different layout you can choose something like this and if there is any relationship that you find between the various bullet points you can use appropriate diagrams like this. These are much better ways to present your list than to stick photos on the white spaces and make a mess out of your slides. But what if I must use pictures on my slides? Wherever possible use a single photo that represents your concept rather than using multiple photos your slides will look much neater. Do you mean something like this? Mm, while the layout looks good, the kind of photos you use needs to change. That brings us to the next beginner mistake, which is using photos with empty calories. When you use abstract images like buildings or handshakes or fake smiling executives, your slides might look visually pleasing, but in reality, they only serve to distract your audience. Make sure that whenever you use a picture on your slide, it illustrates your point instead of just decorating your slides. Okay, I read some books on presentation skills recently and the guru asked me to use large full page images with some clever captions in the corner. So I designed a slide like this to show that our competition is eating into our market share. What do you think of this? This kind of a slide design with large full page photos and some blue sky ideas as captions might work well for a keynote presentation meant to be addressed to a large audience. But when you use such slide design in a business presentation, your audience will troll you. Whenever you design a slide for a business presentation, you need to use relevant visuals. Instead of using a random image like this where somebody is eating something, it is much better to show the real numbers. Here, it is much easier for your audience to see that you are losing your market share because brand A and brand B are eating into your share instead of a photo like this, isn't it? 
So be careful about the kind of advice you receive in designing your slides. Oh, I didn't know there is so much to consider while using photos on my slides. I'll share one final advice before we close this video. Never use photos as backgrounds of any sort, be it a slide background or a chart background. When you do that, this is the kind of result you get. Your audience can neither read your text clearly nor can they enjoy the image. Even if you increase the transparency of the image, the result doesn't really look anything better. The same goes for charts as well. Take a look at a chart with a photo background and the one without. Can you see that it is much harder for your audience to understand your information when you use a picture background? Realize that for most audience, charts are intimidating. Now, when you add a picture background like this, you make it even harder for the audience to understand your numbers. So they instantly tune out. So don't use photos as backgrounds of any sort. In fact, I've created a short playlist of videos on how to use photos in PowerPoint the right way. You can see the link in the description box below the video or you can click on the link right now on your screen. So just click on the link and start watching the videos to take the ideas from this video to the next level. I'll see you inside the first video.